how would you measure the importance of the world's rainforests? As producers of oxygen and absorbers of carbon dioxide, many believe these vast tracts of land are at the very heart of humankind's continued survival. Yet today, these forests are under siege, threatened by agriculture, industry, and an ever-expanding population. One scientist, Gregory Asner, however, has developed an innovative and detailed way of assessing their ecological value. It's called mapping. And America's now contributing correspondent Dan Collins recently joined Asner for a bird's eye view of the process taking place over the Amazon jungle in Peru. There are some corners of our planet which are best appreciated from the air. And this corner is particularly breathtaking. The dramatic beauty of the Cordillera Azul simply cannot be fully taken in from the ground. For tropical ecologist Greg Asner and his team of scientists, which include his wife Robin, it's a stunning demonstration that the Earth is still home to wildernesses beyond the reach of humankind. We have seen ecosystems that literally contemporary science has not laid eyes on. And when I say laid eyes on, I mean nobody has been able to see these geographies with the, the detail in 3D that we've been able to see. And then flying them, actually being up here in the aircraft, mapping them, we have found and seen incredible diversity from montane forest to lowland. One of my favorite places is, of course, Cordillera Azul, which is just unique in its topography and its biology. A pioneer in his field, this former pilot has developed technology which has become the vanguard in understanding the rainforests, which cover less than 2% of our planet, but are home to half the Earth's animal and plant species. With the backing of the US-based Carnegie Institution for Science, his team has adapted this Dornier 228 into a formidable scientific instrument. This multi-million dollar flying laboratory can measure biomass, biodiversity, and essentially the health of huge areas of rainforest. Areas so large it would take scientists working on the ground decades to cover, and it could do so in unprecedented detail. Covering as much as 15 hectares per second, or in a typical six-hour flight, up to 3,200 square kilometers. The Carnegie Airborne Observatory, as it's known, is a giant leap forward in mapping rainforest. Inside, there's more than $10 million worth of equipment. A LIDAR bounces a laser beam off the forest canopy 400,000 times per second. The result is a three-dimensional map of the forest. Meanwhile, a spectrometer measures in living color the number of plant species in the forest canopy by sampling the chemical and light reflecting properties of the leaves. The result is imagery which picks out the biological properties of this mass of green in a kaleidoscope of colors and in three dimensions. The Airborne Observatory is the absolute most accurate method ever invented for measuring carbon in tropical rainforests. What we're doing is we're giving uh, policymakers and people involved in the carbon uh, development or carbon policy process, we're giving them the measurements that make their process possible. The data, about 100 terabytes of it, is crucial to the United Nations Reducing Emissions from Deforestation and Forest Degradation Initiative, known simply as RED. The RED initiative, designed to compensate tropical countries for not deforesting, will be the biggest future source of funding to protect the planet's forests. So, by reading biodiversity and biomass with pinpoint accuracy, this technology can measure how much carbon dioxide is being stored and absorbed by the trees and therefore not released into the atmosphere, which contributes to the greenhouse gases that cause global warming. As we fly over great swathes of palm oil plantations used for biofuels, it's clear 
how single crop agriculture is a huge threat to that goal. And it seems climate change is already having an impact. I've been working in the Amazon for nearly 15 years now, and rarely am I so surprised and uh, shocked as to what I see in this region. What I'm seeing here in terms of the drought-stricken lowland Amazon rainforest following the 2010 drought is frightening, and it gives us uh, a pause as to what the future might be here. And what we are just now finding out is what is the ecological impact of these repeated mega droughts and they are predicted to increase in frequency. Scientists say the 2010 drought could be the most devastating to hit the Amazon rainforest since they began gathering records more than a century ago. The drought came just five years after another drought which scientists called a one in 100 year event. While studies show that the Amazon rainforest absorbs 1.5 billion tonnes of carbon dioxide every year, scientists fear that the trees killed in the droughts could contribute to greenhouse gases. And what we see out the window here is a vast lowland Amazon forest that is dried out. Many, 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 many trees are either uh, leafless or dead, and it's going to take us time to figure out which of the two. But it's way worse than we thought it would be. This cutting-edge scientific research isn't just an academic exercise. It's being put to practical use. Peru, home to the second largest chunk of Amazon rainforest after Brazil, has embraced the technology to help monitor close to 800,000 square kilometers of jungle. The country's environment minister was also given the air tour. It's fundamental in the world actual conocer cuál es el rol que tiene el bosque como stock de carbono que retire carbono y sigue captando carbono porque además en una lógica de mercados de carbono que todos esperan sigan dándose a nivel mundial el Perú tiene en los bosques un activo muy importante pero ese activo no puede funcionar si uno no conoce la realidad This twin engine plane may have crisscrossed more jungle than any other aircraft It's seen areas of utter devastation like these river systems which are vital to the rainforest ecosystem torn apart by illegal gold mining in Peru's southern Madre de Dios region. But also pockets of thriving biodiversity and wild beauty, so far beyond mankind's reach. Over 40% of the world's oxygen is supplied by lush landscapes like this. As leaders pass laws affecting our future, consulting with scientists will be key to the decisions they make. Not only is it a matter of life or death for plant and animal life in the forests of Peru, but every breath we take depends on it. That was Dan Collins reporting from Peru.